Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Dragon Age Origins. Alrighty, when we left off, we were, well, we were here. Um, after we had done everything in Ostagar, we are now in camp. I've sold off all of the excess that we can't use and equipped everyone with what we can use for the foreseeable future. Uh, not everyone has everything that I want them to, but they will eventually. And I decided this time, after our little adventure in Ostagar, we might as well talk a little bit with our party. See, uh, what their opinions are now. So let's start with, uh, Alistair. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. Okay. Tell me about the Grey Wardens. Such as they are. Okay, I guess I've got About no more questions. Wards, yeah. anyhow. Fair enough. Okay, I guess I need nothing. I was sure that we might unlock something doing all of that. Severin. Mm -hmm. Uh, care to answer some questions? All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Of course. I wouldn't expect anything less. You loody. Uh, so tell me about your adventures. My adventures? <laughs> I'm hardly an old man just returned from across the ocean, am I? Nah. Should I shake my fist at nearby children while I talk about the good old days? I mean, you definitely could. I mean, you certainly talk like you've had adventures. Falling down a flight of stairs is an adventure. Falling into someone's bed, also an adventure. <laughs> I am assuming what you're looking for are professional anecdotes. Yeah, a bit of both. My second mission ever I guess. the Crows was a bit intriguing. I was sent to kill a mage who had been meddling in politics. A mage who had been meddling in politics? Yeah, the Crows were willing to anger the Circle of Magi? In Antiva, nobody is too important to escape the reach of the crows. Uh, I see. They've killed kings and queens. That is simply how it is. Okay. As it turned out, the mage in question was quite a delightful young woman. Long, divine legs. Of course you know. would notice that. I caught her in a carriage on her way to escape to the provinces. Mm -hmm. After I killed her guard, she got down on her hands and knees and begged for her life. Rather aptly, I might add. So I joined her in the carriage for the night and left the next morning. You used her? That's horrible. On the contrary, it was she who used me. Or she tried to. Well, oh, The woman had okay. actually convinced me to speak to the crows on her behalf. What can I say? I was young and foolish at the time. Okay. Then, as I was kissing her goodbye to return to Antiba City, she slipped on the threshold and fell backwards out of the carriage. Broke her neck. Shame, really, but at least it happened quickly. So you didn't actually kill her? Not actually, no. I was a bit unimpressed by the development at first. Then I found out that she had told the driver to take her to Janellen instead. She had planned to lose me in the provinces. I would have looked very foolish to the crows. As it was, my master was very impressed that I had done such a fine job of making it look like an accident. The Circle of Magi was unaware of foul play and everyone was happier all around. Except for the mage. I suppose, but she was dead. She didn't need to be happy. <laughs> it was after that when I learned True. that one needn't let a pretty face go to your head. Professionalism was key. That's my moral of the day, you see. Your moral of the day is don't let a pretty face go to your head. Or pretty legs. Or pretty... Otherwise, anyway, let's move on. Um, so you never mix business with pleasure. Mmm, well, there is you. But I'll point out that you did have to capture me and tie me up first. Every rule has its exception. Now that I've mentioned tying me up in that context, do we have extra rope about- <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my god, Zephyrin is like at least half of my friend group. <laughs> Okay, maybe not half, more like a third, but still. Um, wow. Okay. Um, and he only just slightly disapproves. Why? Mm -hmm. Why did, why did, 
What? I don't know why I got disapproval off of that, but okay. Care to answer some questions? All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Okay, that's fair. So, uh, tell me more about your adventures. Again? Well, now, what might interest you, I wonder? Shall I describe the stages involved with Lanthrax poisoning? I watched a man go through all seven once. If you would like, certainly. <laughs> no, I'll not inflict that upon you just yet. What do you mean, just yet? See, how about the largest battle I ever took part in? Mm -hmm. That would have been the slaughter of Prince Azrin. Did you hear of that down in these parts? You killed a prince. Me? Not personally, but I did take part in the attack. Prince Azrin okay. was fourth in line to the throne, you see. He started off as 11th, but oh. worked his way up the old-fashioned method by inheriting control of an entire cross cell from his grandfather. Oh. Assassinating his way through the royal family, the king hired three other cells to take down Prince Azrin once and for all. I was in one of those cells. Okay, wait a minute. There are multiple cells within the crows that can be hired and inherited. Interesting. Is this sort of thing common in Antifa? Antivan royalty is very much bound up in the crows. You wouldn't want it run by a bunch of commoners, after all, would you? Well, yeah, and that's This fair. means they get involved in politics quite often. This particular okay. fight nearly bankrupted the nation, I understand. Oh. It almost ended up putting a crow on the throne, a uh, commoner. Oh. But that's a whole different story. I played a very small part. It seems like an odd way to run the country. Antiva might seem a bit odd in that way to outsiders. We take it in stride, however. Assassins are simply part of the landscape, so to speak. My part in mm. the entire battle was taken up trying to reach Princess Ferina, who had thrown in with her brother. I killed about 11 of her guards personally before I got knocked out of a window. I landed in the knocked river out of a and nearly window. drowned. I was chased out by some urchins who robbed me blind. Made off with my boots, too. At least they didn't cut my throat. And that was my part in history. You got robbed by urchins? Mm. I had to find my way back to the safe house, bruised and naked, and thankful to be alive. But there you go. Tale told. Let's be off before I tell more embarrassing stories, huh? <laughs> yeah, embarrassing for you, maybe. I want to know more, though. Uh, uh Answer more All questions? Right. But I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. You wouldn't expect anything less. How about more about your adventures? Well, the only one that's really worth telling is the story of the mission right before I came to Ferelden. Mm -hmm. But, no, I I would rather not. I, I shouldn't have said anything. Why not? What's the problem? Nothing that I would prefer to speak of. Perhaps another day. I'm sorry. Wow. such a sordid tale that you don't even want to tell me about it. And you've told me plenty about plenty of other things. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's right. ask more questions. Like, what's your opinion of the Dalish? I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. Mm -hmm. And there, of course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. All this tale in the book. I don't know about necessarily that. Was the woodcutter your actual father? How should I know? My mother was a whore. As you'll recall. Well, I mean, that none makes of the sense. other elven boys in the whorehouse knew their fathers. I was not so unusual. Mm. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. Oh. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Mm. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. <laughs> And yet you're oddly cheerful about it. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? Surely your life has not been so idyllic. 
People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. You'd compare my life to yours. Are we so different, you and I? Buffeted by the winds of fate, brought to this point by both circumstance and excellence. Uh, you may have a point. Oh, you are too kind. My original point is that my mother's dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Mm -hmm. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, <laughs> they were discovered, and I never saw them again. Ah, that makes sense. Sorry, I had to wipe out my eye because it was acting up again. I have no idea why. Uh, okay. But you don't seem to think of yourself as Dalish. Not at all. I think of myself as Antivan. Mm. Still, that did not stop me from running off to join a clan when I drew near Antiva City once. Naturally, oh. the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy. I'm sure. at those gloves. But hmm. such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. How did... How did I get more disapproval from Zevran? For fuck's sake. All right, um... Gifts, 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 gifts. What do I give to Zevran? Good question, and I don't know what. Oh, uh, boy, I still didn't look at that. That's my bad. Oh, uh, boy. Legacy White Shear. Hmm. I have no idea if there is anything. Hmm. She is a bard. Hmm. The Garens of Ferelden, a genealogical history. This book traces the line of Arl Eamon back to the time of the Alamari clans. It doesn't seem to have been read much. Ah, uh, man, if only I knew. Small statue of a demon carved out of onyx. Damn it. If only I knew who to give which gifts. I just don't know right now. Damn it, damn it. All right. Um, I have all of Kalen's stuff right here. Then the commander's plate gloves, which eventually and hopefully I intend on giving to someone. Just don't know who. Uh, Sten's stuff is... Ask give it to Sten for now. There we go. And then put this in junk and then I'll sell that. Okay. Well, I think I got all the talking with Zevran I could possibly get out of the way. Let's talk to Liliana. I enjoy the nights at camp. The night always seems more peaceful to me. Safer. It's just quieter. That's all. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Mm -hmm. Silly, isn't it? No, I get it. The dogs will never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. It's not silly to seek moments to lay down your burdens. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. Well, yeah. Sometimes I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you so watchful, and I know you're watching out for me. It would be nice if you stayed awake for a change. Oh, uh, I mean, yeah. That's what friends do. Look out for each other. 
What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. Ooh. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are our, our leader and my friend. And uh. sometimes I think that m maybe we could be more than that. Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. Well, I mean, to be fair, I understand why. You're cute when you're embarrassed. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. Good save. Good save. <laughs> totally believable. Uh, I've always wanted us to be more than just friends because that's technically true. Really? N no one told me. You you felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? Well... Why you all these things? <laughs> Why couldn't you have said them first? <laughs> oh, you... Oh, how very awkward. <laughs> you still like me, right? Oh, chivalry is so dead. <laughs> Making the lady spill her guts like that. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these options. Uh, your spilled guts make me feel loved and accepted. <laughs> uh, fuck it. Go for three. Go in for the kiss. Do it. Let's do it. Yeah, there we go. All right. All right, there you go. Well, I, um, that settles it then. Yeah, that settles it. That settles it, all right. <laughs> all right. Cool. No one else have anything to say about that? Nothing? No one? Yeah, let's see. Yes. I want to discuss something you mentioned. Speak, I'm then. just not sure if there's anything I can talk about. Then I nope. suggest we move on. Uh, question. I am hardly surprised. Never mind. Well. Okay, I as you wish. Apparently, can't talk to him about anything right now. Well, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, never mind. Uh, Alistair. What do you need? Never mind. Okay, I think I've talked to everyone in the main group here. Shale. <sighs> You're still with me, I see. I am, as I've said, for now. Mm -hmm. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. Well, so you're quite helpful. Stay. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. Okay, that's fair. That's more than fair. Uh, we'll talk to them in a bit to sell off that thing. But Morrigan. What do you wish of me? Uh, I'd like to ask you something. If you must. Did you grow up in the Korkari Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? I'm curious. What's wrong with that? Any number of cats could inform you of the answer to that question, but have it your way. Hmm. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many well... years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. Hmm. I have a hard time picturing that. I am no primitive, painted in blood and unable to speak the language. Flemeth knows much of your world and taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. Of course. Very daring. That sounds like you. 
<laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. Hmm. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. I'm supposed to be surprised you're a good liar? <laughs> I do not know how well I lie, but I will do whatever I must in order to survive. Mm. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not mm. have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Touching, like a handshake? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances mm. that Flemeth could never tell me of. Fair. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. Mm -hmm. How to bargain without offending. None mm. of these things I knew. Mm. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Well, I guess the joke's on you, then. You are a fine one to be pointing out the humor of fate. Shall we examine your predicament on the whole? Yes. Yeah. not. Me? I prefer the jest on me to the jest on you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Yeah, no, that's fair. Ooh, I got approval out of Morgan. That's the first time I ever have. Actually. What do you wish of me? Well, uh, let's ask if you, you more things. Like, uh, is Flemeth really what she seems to be? <laughs> well, that depends, does it not? What does she seem to be? Powerful Malek Malefica? You mean, is she truly the Flemeth of legend and story? Tell me, how much do you know of the tale? The one that the chastened still tell of my mother, to frighten them into obedience. Uh, I'm more interested in the truth. I can relay what Flemeth once told me herself, and you can decide whether or not tis the truth, if you desire. That sounds interesting. As the tale is sung by the bards. There was a time when Flemeth was young and beautiful. Mm -hmm. A fair lass in a land of barbarian men. The desire of any who saw her. Mm. Just how long ago is this? Many centuries. Before this land was even named Ferelden. Centuries. The tales say that Flemeth fell in love with Osin the Bard and fled the castle of her husband, the dreadlord Conobar, and that he swore vengeance for her infidelity. In truth, my mother claims that t'was Osun who was her husband, and Conobar the jealous lord who looked on from afar. Mm -hmm. Lord Conobar approached young Osun and offered him wealth and power in exchange for his lovely wife. And Osun agreed. Flemeth must have been angry. The life of a bard is a poor one, and love fades in the wake of hunger. It was Flemeth who suggested the arrangement. Oh. All would have been well had Lord Conobar kept his end of the bargain. But he was a foul man who bargained with coin he did not possess. Oh. Osen was led off to a field and slain, left for dead. Flemeth spoke to the spirits and learned of the deed, and oh. swore revenge. So she truly loved Osun then. That was not the point. Conobar had no honor, so she would not have him. Oh, I don't know the if that's not the point, her, but okay. And was they who slew Conobar. The demon the legend tells of came later. Lord Conobar's allies chased Flemeth, you see. Chased her to the wilds, and there she hid. There she found the demon, and he made her strong. The legends all speak of the great hero Cormac, he who defeated Flemeth and her great army when she invaded the lowlands centuries later. All lies. Which 
she never invaded or he never defeated her. The truth of the matter is that there was never an invasion. As mm. Flemeth tells it, the Chastened never raised an army under her banner, and she never fought with any warrior named Cormac. Cormac led a brutal civil war against his own people, and later claimed it was to vanquish evil by defending uh... the Lord. Thus, he was hailed a hero. Flemeth was only attached to the legend much later. Perhaps it was due to the great war with the Chastened that eventually came, but Mother claims not to know how it began. How is it that Flemeth has survived for so long? The demon within her has transformed her into something else. An abomination, perhaps, some would say. I know not. I only know my mother is clever, and she is part of the wilds as it is part of her. But she is no immortal. She bleeds. A blade in her heart would kill her like any other, were it lucky enough to find her. That tone, that tone near the end, sounded almost like bragging, like, she is saying that the blade would have to be more lucky. Hmm. Interesting. Aren't abominations usually insane horrors? How often is this usually? Always? If not always, then when is it not true? I there are more don't know. things in this world and the next than you or I could ever hope to understand. What Flemeth became is a mystery. I suspect even to her. Interesting. The legend tells of Flemeth having many daughters? You ask if I have sisters. I have asked of this myself. Mm. The stories tell of many witches of the wilds, after all, not just the one. Mm -hmm. And these tales existed long before I did. Mm. Flemeth refuses to speak of other daughters, if they existed. So, should I believe I am her first? I doubt that, too. Why would she refuse to speak of them? The Chastened tell of a falling out between Flemeth and her daughters. They say that one day she hunted them all through the wilds and ate their hearts. Uh -huh. It may be true. I have never seen another witch or heard of one. Perhaps one day Flemeth will eat my heart as well. Do you believe her version? I do not believe everything that Flemeth claims. Oft it seems her bitterness has colored her memories. But on the whole, yes, I believe this tale, if not all. An interesting story. Thank you. Flemeth tells it with far more embellishment than I, but <laughs> you are welcome. Well? Dare I ask of your own mother? Few are abominations of legend, tis true, but I find myself curious nevertheless. My mother died. Recently, in fact. Ah, oh, then you have my sympathies for what it is worth. Which is very little, I am certain. It matters not. Let us move on. That's nice enough. And plus five approval. Again, wasn't expecting it. Okay. Well, I've talked to Liliana. I've talked to Sten and Alistair and Zevran for, I think, as much as I'm going to get out of them. Same with Shale. And Piff, I'm sure I'm not going to get much new. But let's pet him a little bit. E. Happy doggo. Happy doggo. There we go. Alright. And with that, actually, um... Hmm. I'm just gonna double check that everyone's equipped the way I want them to be. There's much as I'm going to be able to do. Oh yeah, I swapped out Merrick's blade for, uh... off of him and gave it to Alistair instead. Eventually, he will also get Kaelin's shield, and then he will get the rest of Kaelin's armor as well. But, uh, for the time being, this is how it's going to be. So, yeah. Anyway. Moving on.
Where should I go to next with Morgan Indeed. and Liliana and Alistair? Yes. Okay. Except and whoops, that was the wrong button. Meant this button. Um Soldier's Peak. Brazilian outskirts. Brazilian ruins. New. Now that I've gone through Ostagar. Can I go back to Flemeth's hut? Is that a thing I can do? Interesting. Although I'm pretty sure I shouldn't. Lake Callan had docks. Frostback Mountains. Didn't I already go over that way? Well, if I hadn't gone that way, might as well go that way anyway. Of course. Fight just outside of Red Cliff. Okay? Or some sort of thing right outside of Red Cliff. Here they come. Okay, well. We're actually uh, in the middle of a skirmish of some kind. It seems like we're saving a couple people. Technically. Okay, we'll fight you. Okay, and... I'm just telling you to fight. That's all I'm doing. Jesus. Like I asked you to kill your mother. Every time he just complains. Okay. Whoa. A shriek. Well, unfortunately, didn't get to save them. At least not all of them. Damn. What the f... What the hell is all over this thing? Well, here's the one elven scout that survived. Our tribe fights for you, Warden. Well, thank you. What do you wish of me? I didn't mean to talk to you. I wanted to see what was up with this barricade. So get off my back. Bloody corpse. Elf root. Can I get you a ladder so you can get off my back? Um, I mean, if you stop complaining. Make things a little easier. Acid flask, okay. Got some money. Now is better than later. Huh. Just kind of surprised that I can. break these barricades. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm done. I think I'm done here. Yeah. Gotten everything that's special and important here. Okay. Moving on. Okay. And here we are. And I noticed that she hasn't turned on any weapon-oriented things, so we'll have her do that. Well, I guess I'm just going to make sure...
I hear the regent is saying that any band that doesn't do what he tells them is going to get trounced. I don't believe that. I heard it plain as day. They have to fall in line and fight the darkspawn or he'll make an example. That's the word he used. That don't sound very Ferelden at all, if you ask me. No, it don't. But apparently, too much going on for him to care. Okay, surface dwarf. Is it true Grey Wardens killed Ferelden's king? Hell no. Absolutely not. May the ancestors protect us all. Yeah. Fairn. Can Who I are interest you? you in something? I've got the finest selection of previously owned armor and weaponry this side of Val Roya. Previously owned. Why pay through the nose for new equipment when you can buy like new for much, much less? Where do you get your like new armor from? Oh, here and there. Look, that's really not important. The important thing is, it's cheap. And just as good as what you'd find at a smithy. Huh. Let me take a look. Oh, of course. And remember, everything's covered by Farin's 24-hour lifetime guarantee. 24-hour lifetime guarantee. Interesting choice of phrase. Okay, um, Winter Shield. Interesting. Huh. Harge. All right, interesting. Nothing really I can do with that, though. A Dalthanen. It's a Kunari sword. It's a Kunari greatsword, actually. Hmm. Interesting. But not worth it. Kunari infantry helm. Interesting. This seems to have been made for someone very large. The metal has been etched with a swirling design almost like wind or waves. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Chevalier's gloves. It's clear that these were not designed for rank-and-file soldiers or anyone who might ever do work. When equipped with a set of Chevalier's armor and boots, the character gains a bonus to willpower and constitution. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Knight Commander's Plate. It's a restriction to a Templar. Okay. Okay. Worn only by the Knight Commander of the Templars, this masterwork plate offers unrivaled protection against physical and magical attacks. Silverite, tier 6, and it requires way too much strength for anyone in my party to be using. But it is significantly powerful. Lord's Hunting Jabot. I think that's how it's pronounced. Or Jabot? I don't know. Adds four attack and four armor. A deceptively delicate kid leather collar with sterling studs. Orlesians are quick to insult Ferelden's dog lords, but hunters still consider them a well-accessorized hound, a novel, and valuable tool. And the throwback harness is weaker in that regard. Makes sense. And then the crystals for... Clear. Clear ice. Hoarfrost clings to the surface of this crystal. Rubbing it away with your thumb, you cast a glimpse of rich blue hues beneath. Huh. Health regeneration in combat, defense, and additional healing effects. Huh. So, clear, instead of flawed, has a whole bunch of additional effects. Very interesting. It's only unfortunate that I can't get it, because I can't really say that I would need it. 
Dwarven Smith's belt adds armor, but that's it. That's barely worth it. I can sell this acid flask since I don't need it. And that's good enough, I guess. Um, uh, hmm. Potion plans. Recipes. Hmm. 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 Remarkable topaz. Portrait of a goose girl. What the fuck is that? A painting in a golden frame showing a girl with windswept hair tending to a flock of geese in a snow-covered valley. Interesting. And Grandmaster Silverite rune. Plus 10 damage versus Darkspawn. The emblem of Dumat, the first archdemon, symbol of betrayal and the first blight. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I guess we'll sell all junk since I didn't need that. Uh, and nothing else, really. Nothing else I can see that I will need. So, it's worth a shot, I guess. Let's see what we got over on this side. I imagine you have already composed a suitable ballad to commemorate the events at Redcliffe, Leliana. Why would I do such a thing? You have taken up your instruments once again, have you not? So to speak, a bard takes events of great import and puts them to tail. What happened at Redcliffe was horrible. So many people died, and they were violated by unimaginable evil forces. That was not so difficult, was it? You may wish to add music, however. You make it sound as if you enjoyed what happened there. I can barely stomach to think of it. But we were successful in the end. Victory without cost has little worth. I just think of what that I... poor little boy went through. No, I don't want to glorify what happened there. Then who will learn from these events? I would think on it some more were I you. They both have a point. What happened was atrocious and terrible. But it would be better to learn from it so it doesn't happen again. But, yeah. That, that's my take on it. Aren! I'm assuming a merchant again, of some type. Flattered by your interest, great lord. You live on the surface? Someone has to. Trade with other races can dry up. We surfacers are Orzammar's lifeline. Even if we're denied a cast, the assembly says we've turned our back on the stone. But they still use the goods we bring. Hypocrites. Maybe oh. it'll change by the time my children are grown. Maybe. How often do you restock in Orzammar? Twice a year. I'm confined to a trade stall in the commons, but I see enough. It's very closed in. My grandfather says I've lost my stone sense. I was born topside. I don't remember having it. Interesting. I should go. Best of luck to you. Thank you. All right. Well, I think the only one who I'm going to be able to trade to is that guy there. But... Ooh. King Loghain will not suffer the delay of his... Okay. Mirka, this land is held in trust for the sovereign dwarven kings. I cannot allow entry at this time. King Loghain demands the allegiance of the Desher, or lords, or whatever you call them in your assembly. I am his appointed messenger. I don't care if you're the king's wiper. <coughs> Orzammar will have none but its own until our throne is settled. Why have your people retreated like this? They hide because they are dwarves. Okay, that's just getting racist. I would challenge any race to fare as well. Our king is dead. Andrew and I do can return to the stone not three weeks ago. The assembly has gone through a dozen votes without agreeing on a successor. If it is not settled soon, 
we risk a civil war. Well, at that point, it's understandable that you guys don't want to have a step in anything. A blight is coming. They must unite with Ferelden. Wait. Who are you to speak for Ferelden? You're no messenger to Loghain. That's for certain. Thank the ancestors. Mm-hmm. The Grey Wardens need their traditional dwarven allies. The Wardens killed King Caelan and nearly doomed Ferelden. They're sworn enemies of King Loghain. Well, that is the royal seal. That means only the assembly is authorized to address it. Grey Warden, you may pass. Thank you. You're letting in a traitor? And a foreigner? In the name of King Loghain, I demand that you execute this stain on the honor of Ferelden. Run to your false king. The dwarves will not hear him today. You... you'll hear of this. King Loghain will see you quartered. Right. You are free to enter Orzammar, Grey Warden. Though I don't know what help you will find. Perhaps I can aid a little bit before I get some help. Alright, so here I am within the kingdom of Orzammar. Not exactly how I expected it to go, and quite frankly, I'm surprised I didn't actually go further into this area. But, such as it is. A trust follow, Warden. Your arrival is a mixed blessing. Oh, you say so? Fair journeys, Warden. Oops. Accidentally skipped that. Do my bad. Do miniatures of these in the city? I would love to have some on my mantle. That would be interesting. Huh. Seems to be a couple statues that are kind of shining a little bit. Beauty, daughter. If you work hard like Branca, all Orzammar will know your name. Mother, I don't want to be like her. She... Don't say that. Not to me, not to anyone. Now get back to the forge. I want to see more details. Yes, Mother. Okay. I, um, not sure what to think of that. Not sure what to think of anything, actually. Erica? Huh? For the love of Aragons, please. If I was allowed to. Right now it doesn't seem to want to let me. Okay, um. Got it. Oh, I see. They give me a little bit of uh, codex entries. Gotcha. That's what these are about. The Paragons. Interesting. Okay. Well, that explains all of that. And beyond that, I am now officially lost. My brain Red, is... Please, sir. Just a bit of bread. If I was allowed to, but uh, when I talked to you, it said no. So, it's about as far as it goes. Sorry, bud. I wish I could. All right. Um, that soup you made for supper last night? Oh, that? That's a traditional Ferelden lamb and pea stew. Do you like it? Oh, so it was lamb then. It had a certain texture I don't normally associate with lamb. They didn't make lamb and pea stew for you in Lothering? We ate simply there. Whole grains made into biscuits or bread, and vegetables from the garden, cooked lightly. No heavy stews. Ah, so the last lamb you had was probably cooked or lesion style. Food shouldn't be frilly and pretentious like that. Now, here in Ferelden, we do things right. We take our ingredients, throw them in the largest pot we can find and cook them for as long as possible until everything is a uniform grey colour. As soon as it looks completely bland and unappetizing, that's when I know it's done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You need to eat more Ferelden Inns. Yeah, I, I kind of think Alistair's taking the piss on that one. I'm pretty sure he's taking the piss. Okay, uh, we're over time as is already. Plus, um, I need my brain to reboot because now I have things in front of me that I have to wrap my head around. 
and boy is it having trouble so thank you all so much for watching click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more click the like button if you like this particular video and share and comment so we can bring more people into this community we can talk about the games we're playing together and i will see you all in the next episode this has been the one the only stray cat playing games and well now we're in the kingdom of orzammar and uh, we're going to try and get the dwarves to join us in our little quest to defeat the dark spawn and we're probably going to have to try and help them figure out their lines of succession shenanigans since the king is dead. What fun for you!